it to my editor. Love it. All right. So uh, how do you say your name? Is it Ryan or Rihanna? Rye Anna. Rye okay. like the bread and Anna like the woman's name. Perfect. That's how I've been pronouncing it. So that works out great. <laughs> or you can just say Rye. A lot of people just call me Rye, my friend. So you can just oh, I love that Rye. Too. Yeah. I love that. Uh, one of my favorite names uh, for a girl is Riley. And oh, I know that's yeah. a guy name, but it's still got that Rye. <laughs> cute. Very cute. I'm so glad to be here. Thank you for yeah, inviting me. Uh, yeah, absolutely. It's such a pleasure. I've been wanting to connect with you more, uh, more and more. And I know you're in our uh, signal group and things and uh, you got a lot going on. So I'd love to hear, you know, more about your journey. If you want to give an intro uh, to whoever's watching today, uh, let yeah. everybody know what you've been up to and what's going on now. Beautiful. Thank you. So I am a guide. I've been working on what the what those titles are, right? How we call ourselves professionally in the world. It's so interesting, but the word guide appears to, to fit the closest and feel the most authentic and aligned to me. And um, I guide people to their highest truths and to their highest alignment using microdosing, mushrooms specifically, and breath work. Um, they don't have to do both, but the combination of both is really effective. Uh, and I started with microdosing myself four years ago. I was in a really dark place. My second child was 18 months old. I was just crumbling under the weight of what I'd created. The 2,000 square foot house, kids in private school, two cars, living in a busy town with lots of traffic. And I was so unhappy. I was so out of alignment. And I, I don't even think I knew that. I just felt like I was failing at doing the thing that I'm supposed to do and it's supposed to look this way and I'm failing at it. And I thought I was awake. I'd been meditating for years and a friend said to me, I think you need some of this. Literally just handed me a spice jar with some ground mushrooms in it and said, just take a little bit every couple of days. So I'm like scouring the internet. I'd never used psychedelics as a young person. I was always more drawn to amphetamines and, and stimulants. Um, and I was a cannabis user, so I wasn't afraid, but I was uh, kind of felt like I would be the girl in the corner who was like, thought there was bugs under her skin, right? Like ripping at my flesh. I, I had an idea that psychedelics were dangerous. I think like most of us. Um, and it wasn't until I allowed myself to sink into it a few weeks later after doing a little research and take just a little bit of that powder every couple of days that I really feel like my life at that time, I was 38, went from black and white to color. I suddenly was able to see things that I, I had no idea that I was had blinders around, like no idea, right? The thing, the way I was showing up, the things I was in denial around, the way I was controlling my environment in order to control my anxiety, it just all started to reveal itself to me. And when people come to me and, and expect their experience with psychedelics will be all warm and fuzzy, right? I hear microdosing is amazing and I hear that your food's gonna taste better and everything's gonna look better. I'm really truthful with them that there's that crumbling of the ego that happens slowly with microdosing, much less than if you took a journey size dose. But some microdosing days are curl up and sob days because I'm seeing truths that hurt, that need to be purged, that need to be released. So I've been on this journey with microdosing and then working my way towards larger journey doses about every six to eight weeks for four years now. And I've been helping friends, family, and clients use this medicine uh, for the last two years. And I have learned so much. I'm, I feel so privileged to be able to carry this medicine and that people feel um, safe working with me to use it. And I've just, each person that comes to me that I help craft a schedule and um, a plan for using the medicine intentionally teaches me something new. So here I am now with this breathwork piece. This is newer, combining it with the microdosing in, in the same day or in the same intentional container and really getting to be blown away by the power of literally. our minds and our bodies. Yes, literally <laughs> the power of our minds and our bodies when we nudge them with these really, really powerful tools um, and, and when we're intentional with them. Yeah, absolutely. I couldn't agree more. I'm curious, uh, what's your routine look like for microdosing now? Now that you're a professional in the space, now that you've had four years experience, you know, uh, what would you say that that dosage chart looks like for you? 
Yeah, so I have been formulating the um, psilocybin medicine into a tincture um, for the last six months. And so I've concentrated it down to where literally two drops, two to three drops is a microdose for me. I'm still working on what it exactly equates to, but it's around 200 milligrams or 0.2 grams is really kind of my sweet spot, right? We know that everybody's a little bit different. Some people need less, some people need a little bit more, and that's the beauty and the fun. And I'm really in this intuitive place using it. I'm more towards the um, uh, stamen schedule of about four days on and then three days off. Um, the weekdays appear to be the days when I need that support more with juggling work and kids. So I choose the microdosing there. And then the weekends, I allow myself to do the integrating, to get in the hammock, to maybe feel a little bit more low by that third day off, right? I call that the contrast day, the one where you're like, oh man, I wish it was a microdosing day because everything <laughs> might be a little bit more sparkly or more, uh, more alive, but allowing yourself, allowing myself to be in that contrast day, maybe on a Sunday and just be okay with what's there. Um, so yeah, about a four on three off, but it's really intuitive. If I'm having a really easy week that feels okay, I might take a break for a few days and see what's there without the medicine. And if I'm really struggling, if there's been some family conflict or something and it feels really hard and heavy and tense, I might take five drops and I might do it five days in a row before I give myself a break. So there's an intuitive piece there that I think sometimes we need permission to tinker with the medicine. Everybody, you know, a lot of people want to do it just right, just so. Um, but once you're connected to the plant, to the consciousness of that plant and to yourself, and you know what your intentional routine looks like, I think it's really beautiful to be able to tinker. Yeah, I love that too. That word tinker reminds me of Tinkerbell. But yeah, it's, it's beautiful. And it's so, what you're saying there is just incredible because yeah, we get questions about charts all the time. And every single time that I give, I mean, you know, in the group, there's like so many people that are professionals in this space and they all have their own and we have our own too. I think we even have two of them that we've done over the years. It's like, it doesn't matter because everybody is so different. And this piece on intuition is, yeah, it's so, so important. And you calling yourself a guide, I really enjoy that too. And I always saw it of it as the medicine as being a guide. So I think it's beautiful that you found that term in working with this medicine, you know, it was like a gift for you. Yeah, you're in this space now. You are the medicine. <laughs> yeah, yes, you are, you are the medicine. People. Yeah. That's exactly it. You are the medicine and you are the placebo. It doesn't matter as long as you have the belief, right, that your own intuition is is right and is good and is pure and that we can get the other stuff out of the way. I think that's what I, I most see when I'm working with someone, they're looking for that information outside of themselves, right? What is the answer that I can take so that I can do it right or have it right or finally be aligned? And what I think is so beautiful about psychedelics is what can we remove? What can you let go of? What can we purge, right? Where can we make space so that what's already there can come up and through? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm curious too, what what brought you to the microdosing space over the macro dosing space? Was it just yeah. from you starting out in, with the micro dosing was your first experience or was it something else? Yeah, it's such a good question. And I've dabbled in guiding people with larger doses and there's so much magic there and um, there's so much intensity there too. Yeah. I think I really, I really enjoy helping people take it into their real life and to have the integration be literally the day after you take your dose before you take your next dose, this ongoing integration over three months. And I really try to get people to look at it in seasonal chunks, like to commit to the microdosing for three months. It's not something you can try once or twice and say it works for me or it doesn't work for me, right? You've got to commit. Um, so yeah, I think I like, I, I, I've been a health coach for eight years and so the um, integration of the habit and the mindset shift in the everyday life is I think where I'm really most lit up around it. And from a practical standpoint, right, doing journey work requires that space and that time away from my family, right, and that being able to really go deep with someone there love that so juicy and i so value the guides who have done that with me and for me when i've needed that work and maybe someday i'll do that more it's intriguing but i i really do love the 
you know, and it's it, it's worth saying there are many people who will microdose and will never do a journey size dose. That's just too frightening for them, or it feels too big for them, or it's too intimidating. Now, some people get started microdosing, and once they become acquainted with the medicine, start to increase their dose until they're there, right? And their curiosity has been safely titrated up. But for the most part, I, I mean, actually, I'm working with women and men in their 60s and 70s who've never touched even cannabis, right? People who can't imagine getting in a tent and doing a journey size dose with a guide. Um, and they're seeing incredible shifts in lifelong depression and anxiety, symptoms of PTSD, ADHD, OCD, complex PTSD, um, major shifts in under three months of the microdosing. Yeah, that's beautiful. And we hear this all the time in our practice too. I think it's really miraculous that you bring the seasons into it because it's true. It does take a commitment and what an easy commitment that is 13 weeks, 90 days, like let's do this thing, you know, uh, yes. and it makes such a, such a big difference overall. Uh, so I'm curious, are you seeing that people want to continue with this medicine after the three months? Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's an, it, yes, I think, you know, for all of what can be challenging about using psychedelics to break down what doesn't belong, the microdosing and mushrooms in general are gentle and they're loving and they're effective. You know, it's, it's, I'm not trying to sell someone on, you know, three days of ayahuasca experience. Like that's a, that's a very different experience from, you know, on the days that are really tough with your kids and with work, take this little tincture and a few drops or this little capsule with just enough and really being gentle with people that they can even open the capsule or what, however the, the plant material comes through for them. And just, it could be a microdose of a microdose of a microdose of a microdose, right? Like <laughs> the nano can't, dose. Can't be too, yes, the nano <laughs> dose, that's right. It can't be too small if that's what you need to build that trust and that relationship with the medicine and with me and with yourself, right? Little by little. Yes. I mean, most of my people have been with me for over a year and I continue to bring on new clients regularly. Um, word of mouth is huge for this kind of practice because of trust. But yeah, that they, they come back and now it, they take breaks too, which I think is important. People always want to know, am I going to get addicted to microdosing, right? Am I going to not be able to do my life without it? And the hard answer is no, no. Now you might say, oh, I, you know, I have an affinity for this. I really enjoy it. I really like it, but it's not habit forming. And that's one of the biggest things I have to really educate people around. And in fact, it can help them with the addictive tendencies around alcohol and sugar and those other pieces that are holding them back from being aligned. Yeah, absolutely. I really couldn't agree more with that. Also, uh, <laughs> it's funny, you know, opposite to you, when I started working with these medicines, I was all for the big doses. And when I made the decision that I was getting sober, I went full in every weekend. I was doing a heroic dose and I started doing trip sitting with others too in that time, which was very beautiful being able to share that experience with others. Um, and it, it truly did turn everything around. By the time I was actually exposed to microdosing, I was actually uh, surprised how much it affected me. I'm like, if I've been working with these big doses for so many years, how is a microdose making such a big impact? And the truth is, it really does. Like even now, I've been working with them for a couple of years now in the smaller doses. And if I take anything over 100 milligrams, I'm like, in the I'm on the ground with the grass and the bugs and like I'm call, calling in work I work for myself but still it's like I'm calling in sorry I'm calling my team you gotta take the calls I can't do it I don't know how to work the computer yeah yeah oh yeah it's like there's no computer no cell phone no looking at screens I'm everything feels like sensory overload so I just take the time for for nature and so um I did, I did figure out where my sweet spot is, usually between uh, 50 milligrams and 100 milligrams, anything around there, I'm good. Even I can go up to 150, but if I, yeah, even in, at that, it's, sometimes it's a very intense uh, experience. Like as you had said before, it's like, um, you know, some days you may just be in bed crying it out. Uh, you know, I went through a lot of stuff in, in my life. I've seen some things, I've been, out of alignment and in alignment and I'm always on this you know roller coaster we'll Sorry, say but it's um it's really nice to have that tool that's there to help 
And I want to hear more about the other tools that you bring to the table. Uh, you know, you're talking about breath work here, and I again find that so interesting and so important. Uh, I again, the reason why I was even able to get over those ad addictive behaviors was because not only was I working with doses of psilocybin, but I was doing Kundalini yoga, like hardcore, two hours a day, and that is crazy <laughs> breath work, right? So. Uh, yeah, so how are you integrating this in? How did you get into breath work? How are you using it for yourself and with your clients? Great, thank you so much for that because I feel like this is such an important piece and it can be breath work or it can be other somatic healing modalities, right? It doesn't have to be breath work, the Kundalini you talk about, yoga, even just, you know, a yoga flow. But it, it, it became very clear to me about a year ago, three years into using the microdosing. Okay, I've made a ton of progress. I was so clear. 2000 square foot house gone all of that stuff sold that was out of alignment right moved to the country build a house that's a thousand square feet and very manageable and kids went from private school to nature school right so huge shifts in my life feeling so aligned and i still was struggling so much with my trauma reactions in my actual body Right. So my mind was like, I'm good. I know all of this. I feel really clear. I feel really connected. And the second I walk into my mom's house, which is a thousand feet down the road, right? My whole body feels unsafe, right? I don't know what's going on. We've worked on our relationship. Everything's okay, right? We're really clear. We've talked it all out, but my body, right? Yeah. And so I really started to sink into understanding trauma more from a somatic perspective and was blown away to come to understand that the issues are in the tissues, right? That like the trauma, the stuck emotions, the actual memories that my body doesn't know if I'm four years old or 42 years old when I'm with my mom or whoever, whatever your triggers are, right? That the ding, the alert comes in from your boss and suddenly you're flooded with that adrenaline, right? We all have those moments where we become so ungrounded and I was really struggling on a day to day with that, Ashley. So I started to practice some breath work and like probably like your experience i was like why is this not taught to children in kindergarten <laughs> right? like nobody's breathing enough nobody's breathing correctly and more than that this journey based breathing this deeper type of breathing that we could these states these altered states of consciousness allow us not to just oh clear the mind chatter but literally move that stuck stagnant energy trapped emotion and dis-ease from the tissues of the body and that was the game changer for me. Um, the last six months I've been practicing, deep practicing for about uh, three to five days a week, whether it's five minutes and all the way up to an hour with a guide, with a teacher. And then I became trained in the pause breath work uh, facilitator training. And I have, uh, I lead people on deep journeys now. So while I might not be going in a tent to do a psilocybin journey with people, they can take a microdose and we can get on Zoom for 75 minutes, right? And we can lay down, create that safe container, seal it, and I can guide them with these very simple activating breath patterns that allow them to shake and cry and move and make noise and breathe and let the, the yuck come right out of their systems. You don't have to know what it is, why it's there, right? Who put it there? Who's to blame for it? How do we process it out, right? We all are trying to heal our mental health in this culture through the brain, right? We gotta figure out how to stop having trauma triggers. It's absurd and it doesn't work. We know that. People with complex PTSD are failed by therapy, by traditional therapies. That's not how you heal trauma. You don't talk about it. You feel your way out of it. So the breath work, it's like the psychedelics, allow the mind to see the different possibilities, to see what the ego is doing, and then the breath work gives you the permission and the tool to move it out and make the actual shifts. That's awesome. I I love how you explain that too. The issues are in the tissues. It's, yeah, it's so, so true. And I experienced that in Kundalini yoga too. You know, I had a really hard time with meditation. It's like, you know, I was, I drank for over a decade. I was in the hospitality and tourism industry. So it was like, you know, work hard, but play harder type yeah. of atmosphere. And so, you know, I really had to get it all out. And the reason why I was drinking was because I didn't want to face anything. You know, the reason why I worked so hard when I did was because I didn't want to face any of it. So then to sit there in a meditation, it was like, what are you talking about? No way. Rip your skin off, right? Oh, like yeah. <laughs> yeah, even without the, even without any kind of drugs, I would have been, you know, in the corner doing that. So, um, you know, but I was working with this medicine. I'm like, okay, 
how about kundalini yoga it wasn't i didn't actually even commit to kundalini yoga i just heard that yoga was helping people lose weight and i had put on a little bit of weight from the drinking and i was like okay i'm gonna lose that and the yoga that i found was kundalini yoga and it led me to be able to meditate mainly because you're doing these movements and using your breath to the point of exhaustion where you don't you know you don't have a choice but to go into that meditative state and by the time you do it's like everything else is gone so you're just with yourself and it's a beautiful beautiful experience um also, so blissful you describe it beautifully beautifully <laughs> okay. um i thought it was pretty funny too you brought up your mom and having those uh those traumas when you see her it's like it doesn't matter how much like, you went through there's this quote by ram das like you think you're enlightened until you go spend a week with your family <laughs> 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 oh my gosh, it's so true. It's so it's true. So true. And I'm actually going through that myself right now. My mom just moved in with me, so I'm literally going through that. It's like God bless she you. would call me on the phone and I would smudge my apartment. <laughs> and now she's living in my place. <laughs> and I'm like, oh my God, what do I do? But it's such a an opportunity to see where are those triggers still, right? You know, it's all an opportunity. And the fact that I am able to go into it with observation instead of you know being triggered and going into that child self and like and freaking out it's instead I get to stay in me I get to stay present in the moment and I get to consciously make sure my boundaries are set I get to consciously practice what healthy boundaries look like and what healthy communication looks like and yeah it's Brilliant. just it's such a different kind of thing when you own the fact that you're the observer when you can be present in the moment instead of going into the past or getting freaked out by whatever's going to happen in the future that really is out of your control the past and the future out of your control the only thing you've got is Truth. right now the only thing you've got is you so practicing these tools sets you up for these kind of opportunities when you know there's your mom moving in with you <laughs> You just hit the nail on the head and so many things. And yeah, we, so we're here, we are both practicing being in proximity to our mothers who have probably, my mom has really tried her best. And every time I've given her feedback and, you know, communicated with her, she's really tried to shift. But yet yep. my reactions were still so like, oh, you're crazy. You're insane. You make me crazy. And she's like, I literally just said hello. Right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, so been there. owning that, owning that. And you said something really key, being curious about Trigger. That's what the microdosing does for me and for the clients, right? There's enough of that space. There's enough of that room where you can uh, unattach from this idea that your emotions and your thoughts are you, right? And and come up over here and say like, oh, I am observing myself totally freaking out right now. What's going on? What's under there? What does little ride need right now, right? Like that's what the psychedelic can give us that little bit of buffer zone and that space and then the breath work or whatever somatic healing modality you want can help to move you out and through yeah that's awesome so do you have any other modalities that you add in or work with i remember uh we had a coach working with us for a while uh who had gotten microdoses from you and you were stacking it with lion's mane and niacin so yes can you tell us a little bit about that why do you do this um how is it helping people yeah so the stack is really interesting and not not everybody responds to it i actually let people add that to the psilocybin now the niacin and the lion's mane but, but there's some people respond beautifully to it and it just kind of lights things up a little bit more in the brain and activates things a little bit more especially those folks that take the microdose the opposite of you and are like i think i feel something right i'm not quite sure i do I don't know, this is slightly off topic. My theory is those who are super affected by even smaller doses are super connected and awake typically or very intuitive. And those that are, have a little bit of a harder time feeling it in their system, maybe a little bit more closed down from a chakra standpoint. So I'm tinkering with that as people tell me their sensitivity levels. I'd be curious to know what you think of that. But yeah, the lion's mate especially, it works along the same receptors in the brain. So especially for folks struggling with ADHD, um, and really wanting to use this as a creativity enhancer or the ability to just focus, not even on a project, but focus on their life or their healing, right? And not get so distracted by the shiny objects. I find that the lion's mane is an amazing accompaniment to the psilocybin. Yeah, oh, I 
I agree so much. We love working with it too. Uh, actually, I am a bit of a forager. I wouldn't say like I'm the, the best out there or anything, no Paul Stamets, uh, but I get out as often as possible. And that's one of the main mushrooms that I go looking for because uh, with my trauma, one of the big things was my nervous system. And I know you're familiar with this, with the somatic work and breath work, uh, but that was something I really had to work on. And because a lot of my schooling was in the nutrition space and herbology space, you know, I automatically went for you know, how do I get my hands on these mushrooms? Where do I find them? And uh, so I went out and uh, for my birthday this year, I was eating them every day that week because I would just go out to the forest and come back and fry them up. It's beautiful, beautiful. And it's uh, great for your nervous system, for rewiring your brain and your nervous system to work with you. Uh, a lot of mushrooms are actually adaptogens and really good with this, but I found that that one uh, specifically you know, I could feel, feel instantly. Feel um, the difference. Yeah. You feel it coursing through your veins. That's so beautiful and fresh. It has that texture, right? It's almost like crab meat. It's like meaty almost when you fry it up, yeah. right? I mean, you don't, oh, yeah. I don't think you eat meat, but from what you remember yeah. of meat. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I, yeah, I used to being in the hospitality and tourism industry, you know, I got to eat some really luxury meals uh you know a lot of the time you know i got exposed to really great chefs all the time uh but yeah to the, it's been years i think uh, i quit eating meat in 2014 i uh, i would only go to the farmers markets and get a uh, chicken and a lamb and once i did that once i was like i don't even need it so i went back to just you know mushrooms and the vegetables and i like cooking mushrooms like you would me i uh there's some vegetables you can do that with too. Just, you know, you still want that flavor, especially, you know, being around chefs forever. You know, I, yes. you know, I couldn't give that up. I still needed that little bit of like luxury in the kitchen, you know, and so I found a good way to integrate it all in. <laughs> good for you. And that's what it's all about, right? Finding what works for you and how that you can, how you can be satisfied with, with your stuff. And I will add on to this that I, I no longer work with people directly on nutrition, but it's always part of a conversation, right? About what is going in your body. You know, if someone is drinking a lot and eating a lot of sugar and eating a lot of processed refined carbohydrates and grains and fast foods, they're gonna have a much harder time seeing, right? Feeling and, and working with the medicine. And so that inherently becomes part of the work in some ways. And, and beyond that detoxification of what's in your body, huge. I mean, for like, our bodies are amazing detox detoxifying organs and um, machines, everything, and we cannot keep up with the level of what's out there and what we've been inundated with. And so, you know, mold, uh, heavy metals, you know, everything, everything, it's everywhere. It's like when you start to talk about it, it's a little like, ah, you know, I'm being buried under all the toxins. Yeah. And even minute effort sweating in a sauna, sweating because you're going for a run, using some charcoal or other binders that can help, you know, zeolites can help pull that out, being open to coffee enemas if you're really unwell. I do attract a lot of people with chronic illness. Just there are so many ways that we can detoxify um, and start to kill off and, and you know, usher these pathogens out. And that is going to go such a long way combined with the plant medicine to do that work in our brains and in our bodies. Yeah. Yeah, I agree so much. I uh, do apologize, so I have to just go for a quick minute. So I'm going to pause you here and I'll be right back. My son just called, <laughs> called me. No problem. No problem, okay. girl. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, is, of course. He's on uh, five now. He still can't quite reach his, when he's going to the bathroom. So, <laughs> so I can hear him there as you're talking. Oh, man. Oh, man. 
<laughs> I need to wipe my, yeah, my five-year-old just goes, wipe me. Somebody wipe me. I get it. That's funny. All right, love. So uh, is there anything that you wanted to talk about or to share with everybody today? Yeah, I'm really passionate about helping people understand what it means to be intentional with the medicine. You know, when someone is being set up to do a journey and they understand that it's spiritual and energetic, there should be good guidance on, you know, setting that clear intention. What do you hope to receive from this, from the medicine, from the journey experience? And and early on, I saw a lot of people microdosing very carelessly um, or, you know, just kind of like throwing it back with their vitamin C and being like, well, I hope this works, right? Like, yeah. and so a big part of what I help people do is understand how to set intentions and understand um, how valuable it is to even just sit with that medicine for two minutes, right? To just connect, to get grounded, to take five deep breaths, and then to speak an intention out loud or written in a journal that's going to set it in motion more than just thinking it, right? And so I ask people to work with the sentence stem, show me what I need to know about blank, or show me what it looks like to blank, or show me what it feels like to blank. And with that, I, I, you know, early on was just set an intention. And I realized people don't under, even understand what that means to set an intention in our culture. This is not taught. And so those sentence stems, show me what I need to know about, show me what it looks like to, or show me what it feels like to, offer such a direct line of communication to this plant medicine. Like so direct that I've almost had to teach people to be careful and intentional about your intention too. So I had a mom, mom of three under five who started microdosing and she got to her third or fourth microdosing day, called me up and said, this is not working. I'm like rageful. I'm rageful on my microdosing days. I almost hurt one of my children. I think this medicine is bad for me. So I got on the phone with her and I said, first thing, what was your intention? And she said, I asked the medicine to show me everything I've been hiding from myself, <laughs> right? <laughs> Mom of three, holding it together, right? Pushing down, pushing down, pushing down, pushing yeah. down. All of these emotions, right? And what was coming up was just all of it. Anger, right? Resentment, yeah. just blah, right? So the medicine very much was working and it was meeting her at her intention. So we backed way up, right? Just show me what it looks like to take this medicine and work with what comes up, right? can be a very simple. Um, so that's that's a big piece that I feel like is important in the microdosing community to share. Like it's, it's even though it's not a big journey dose in a tent with a shaman, you wanna bring just the same level of intention and reflection, you know, at the end of the day, coming back to your intention. Like, did I see any of that? Did anything come up today? 90% of the time, yes. And when you set that intention out loud in the morning, you're going, the, the medicine and you are going to go like, oh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yep. Oh, yep. There you are again. Okay. I see it. I see what's being said. I see what's being shared. Thank you for showing me. Yeah. Yeah. That's so great. And I love that you're saying write down the intention to take it that step further and get it down because then when you are doing the reflection, you remember and you get to really see what that looked like to have it answered. The sentence stems to a beautiful addition. Uh, we do a lot around intention setting uh, too and I've done some guides because I really felt like even with regular stuff like coffee, coffee can be a great tonic and yet people aren't setting intentions for it. It's just like, you know, even if you're just asking like, oh, I just want extra energy. It's like you're going to get that. Otherwise, you may not, you know, it's like, with cannabis, you know. Talk about what it is you want the cannabis to heal or what you want to focus on. Cannabis is great for focus too. You know, you want, you want to gap out for four hours, set an intention, say, I'm going to work for four hours and you're going to get everything done and more. <laughs> But yeah, well said. My, my relationship to cannabis changed completely when I started setting an intention before using it. Well, very well said. This does not just apply to mushrooms. This applies to all plant medicines. Yeah, coffee, yeah. essential oils, right? All yeah, of it. Yeah, all of it. Yeah, essential oils, another great one. Um, 
Yeah, and I actually, I know you're a mom too, so I'm just going to say this uh, for any parents out there. I was actually just speaking with an ambulance driver and essential oil, oils are something that's really dangerous for kids. A lot of kids are getting into their parents' essential oils and then they try it and it's at deathly doses. So there's too much. Yeah, stuff going on here. Uh, so yeah, just, you know, they're great, great medicines, but they're so concentrated and they are medicines. So the kids need to be taught, you know, stay out away from these things have a parent you know like a knife it's like sure you can use it but have a parent and know how to use it otherwise you stay yes. away until you're ready until you've had that training and amazing and that goes for so many things look we you know we tend to think a oh if a little is good so much more is probably better right and oftentimes that is not the case and here talking about microdosing for some people that is not the case a little is more than enough so yeah yes. what a great point and thank you for that public service announcement i will <laughs> yes. I, I will i will put my oils up a little bit higher yeah yeah <laughs> Yeah, I had no idea. I was caught by surprise, but it was a great conversation and definitely opened my eyes to uh, yeah. respecting these plants for how powerful they are. Yeah, they are. And it's all medicine. I even see Finn do that with food, too. Uh, you know, I'll tell him, oh, this is a, a, a great food, a really healthy drink like kombucha, for instance, which he calls burping potion. And then <laughs> <laughs> and then he goes, he drinks a whole bunch so he can get out all these burps and it's like, no, it's still just a little bit, you know, and with food too, it's like, yeah, you sure have the frozen blueberries, they're a great snack, but you can't eat them all day. They can't be all you eat. You need the diversity too. And just as with kids, we're reparenting ourselves, you know, so our upbringing is way different than how we're raising our kids and so at the same time we got to be reinforcing this into ourselves these same kind of behaviors uh, you can't master anything until you're teaching it and if you're going to teach it and you want to master it then make sure you're doing the work you know make sure you understand what's going on here you know how it works for you yes. so that you're doing this you know in kind of a process that's really helping you grow Beautifully said. Gosh, you're such a gift to your community to be able to share at that level and to be doing the work and modeling it for people. That's that's so much of it when we're working with people, right? They're regulating their nervous system from me when I'm breathing with them, when I'm coaching them, right? So having my, you know, have, taking that time before a session to get myself grounded and regulated, yeah, 100% is, is the work and gives them permission to do that work too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So uh, is there anything else that you'd like to bring to the table today? Uh, or would you just like to share with everybody how they can reach you, connect with you, you know, in any of the resources that you have? Yes, please. Uh, thank you so much for that opportunity to share. My website has a free microdosing mini course on it and everything that I've learned over the last four years, the studies I've compiled, this intentional um, angle that I, I really share around it and the dosing schedules I recommend, I've put it, I've made it all free, right? I, I learned this all by trial and error, by research through friends. And so I feel like this information should be available to everybody. So you can go to my website, ryanabatiste.com. Um, hopefully you'll be able to actually yes. share it written because it's kind of tricky to spell. Okay, good. RyanaBatiste.com and download the free microdosing mini course. Um, and then uh, on Instagram, I spend a good bit of time on stories. I just started something called Breathwork Church every Sunday, offering healing through the breathwork and with some energy work on 11.11 on Sundays, Eastern Standard Time. So come visit me on Instagram at Ryana Batiste and um, receive some healing and always feel free to shoot me a DM or a message if you have any questions about microdosing. It's one of my favorite things to talk about. So i'm here oh i love it thank you so much ryana it's a pleasure connecting with you again you know every time is just yeah feels so good and i can't wait till it's in person one day <laughs> buy you a smoothie That's or something it. <laughs> yes a, yeah so psilocybin smoothies together and yeah. <laughs> well, hang my, out i'm yeah <laughs> I'm, I'm so honored that you asked me to come on and um, yeah, have a beautiful autumn season and holiday season with your family and your mom. Good luck with yeah. your triggers. Bring your, bring your microdosing, bring your intention to the micro. Show me what it looks like to be chill with mom when I'm in her presence and yeah. let me know how it goes. Yeah, absolutely. I will for sure. Thank you so much again. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Bye. Bye girl. Bye.